All right, let's get in on um, part two of this IMF lab. Um, I'll show you some stuff. We'll get the camera all set up. So, awesome. Okay, so we're going to start. Um, I've got my thermometer here. Got it in degrees Celsius. Um, there is a piece of uh, filter paper that I've wrapped around the end and taped. And we're going to dip it in one of the liquids and then see what happens. Um, I'm also going to record, so you guys should be able, or uh, sorry, keep track of the time. I'll start a stopwatch. So those are the really the two big pieces of data that you'll need. Let me see if I can find a way to get this to stay stable. I'm going to stick it on a paper towel. Okay, awesome. Um, so make a few small adjustments to make sure everyone can see all the numbers. Okay, awesome. Um, let's start with water. Um, we're only going to go to 180 seconds. Yeah, so this one is water. All right, one moment. Okay. Oops, pardon me. Um, all right, I didn't read that. Hopefully it wasn't too embarrassing. Okay, so I'm going to dip this so I've got this little tube, test tube that just says water, so I'm just dipping the end in water. And you guys can record, start recording the temperature as time passes. Oh, let's start the stopwatch. Every 30 seconds. Um, while this is going, I can show, I can tell you a couple of things. Um, so this, this lab, the whole idea is about vaporization. Um, how, as when the, uh, the water, um, that's sitting on the thermometer is, is evaporating, it's lowering the temperature. Um, so you're going to try this with a whole bunch of different substances and see what this kind of tells you about how vaporization works. Um, now that I'm thinking about it, I might need to go grab fresh thermometers so that, that way um, they're all at the same temperature so i'll have to go do that in a second um let's see two two minutes and there's okay um all right let me go do that right now while the timer is still going All right, so that should be your data for water, um, and I'll be right back with the next one. All right, so the next one we're going to do is isopropyl alcohol. I was just going to show you how I um, how I wrapped these up um, up in the these little bits of filter paper. I kind of cut them in half and then just sort of wrapped it all around like this, like so tightly as I could. Let me take a second. Um, it doesn't really matter what paper you use. I just happen to have filter papers and I like filter papers so that's what I'm using. Um, I'm wearing gloves because like water and isopropyl alcohol are not a really a big deal but some of these other um, organic substances are not very safe so it's probably not a bad idea that we're doing it 
as a virtual lab instead of in person uh, with that in mind. So um, here we've got the one that says, it says alcohol on it. I know that it's isopropyl alcohol. We're gonna uh, dip that in and put this down and start. Make sure, make sure that you guys can see that. All right. Um, so I set up these little test tubes while that's going. Sorry, I set up all these little test tubes that have all the different um, substances in them. Um, a lot of them are pretty, pretty smelly and nasty. Uh, you probably can't see in my video. Yeah, my fume hood in the back is on. You probably can't quite hear it, but there's a little bit of a hum um, from that in the background. I'm going to set up a couple more thermometers while we're waiting. It's already pretty different than the water, huh? So that's why I'm wearing gloves. Um, we normally don't really wear a lot of gloves in chemistry because um, most of the time the things we're working with don't require it. Um, but sometimes it's a good idea. Oh no, I just realized I don't think I gave you enough of the data for water. I think I left you, you didn't give you the full 180 seconds. Oh well, I'll do it for this one. All right, and that looks like we're good to go. So we will stop with the isopropyl alcohol and that one off to the side. Uh, let's do acetone next. So um, this one I put a little stopper on because it can smell super bad. So uh, isopropyl alcohol isn't really that bad and obviously water doesn't smell like anything. Uh, but a lot of these organic compounds are pretty nasty. Okay, so this one is the acetone. Um, most, a lot of organic compounds, I, when I say organic compounds, what I really mean is like carbon-based compounds. I'm using the chemistry word. Ooh, I don't know if I'm smelling the acetone. That's not the acetone. Oh, one of these smells really bad. It's the, um, the, octal, the octal alcohol. Oh my God, it's awful. It is so bad. It's not the worst thing I've ever smelled. Um, there's a compound. Oh, no, that's, there's some acetone smell. Oof. Yeah, that's definitely, uh, definitely pretty stinky. Whoa. Oh, that temperature's dropping. That's pretty nuts.
think we're going to find out if these thermometers will read negative temperature. I think they will, but let's, we're going we're gonna to find out. That's for dang sure. Maybe not. Oh yeah, so I was saying organic compounds are the carbon-based ones, and a lot of them tend to be nonpolar. Um, so nonpolar things can, are just not usually, not always a good thing. Um, or I don't know, they can just get seep into your skin and just do horrible things. So, oh, come on, are we going to get lower than? No, it doesn't look like it. Oh, well, oh, there we go. Was that slightly over? Oh, well, all right. So yeah, if I pick this up, um, I mean, I'm just feeling it and it's, it's cold. It is not, it is not hot. That is for dang sure. Okay, so let's stop that one. Um, I want to do, let's do the N-butyl next. Where's my marker? Here it is. N-butyl. Okay, so here, here it is. I mean, it's again, shockingly, it's just another clear liquid. Um, you're ready to go. I want to hold my breath. These things are real stanky. This one's actually, I don't think it's the smelliest of the lot. But it's kind of not something you really want to breathe in. It gives people headaches. So, oof, oh, gotta start. Yep, oh, there's a smell. I should do this in my fume hood, but the, um, Internet doesn't work as well, which is silly. I could just record whatever. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, okay, so let's talk about this for a second because this is kind of cool. Um, so these names are all organic chemistry names. Um, it's another way of naming like uh, covalent molecules. Um, anytime you see but, um, that means four. So in chemistry, I can give you, excuse me, I can give you a quick little side lesson, if you're curious. In organic nomenclature, if you have a compound that only has one height, uh, one carbon, you use um, the prefix or suffix or whatever, the, 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 this meth. So that's what that means. Um, if it has two, it's eth. If it has three, it's prop or prope. So it's number of carbons. Let's see, four is butte. Oops, and you guys can't see the thermometer. That's the important thing. Hold on. Sorry, sorry, sorry. There you go. Nope, can't see it. There we go. Um, five is pent. Six is hex. And then kind of hex, yeah, kind of goes from there. Um, so ethanol. Um, means that it is something that has two carbons and all ol means alcohol which means an oh group so um uh, methanol is a single carbon with an oh group and then we always assume that it has the full number of hydrogens around it so it would be methanol is um let's see what is it c c CH3OH. Um, ethanol is two carbons with that OH group at the end. So that would be, um, let's see, it's five hydrogens. So that's C2H5OH. Um, and then propanol and butanol, you just keep adding more O-alls at the end. This one, so yeah. Um, 
if it has an ane ending at the end, it means that there's just hydrogens. If it has um, uh, an ene, uh, E-N-E, -E, it means that there's a double bond. So you have one less, like two less hydrogens. Um, if it has an ine, Y-N-E, it means it's a triple bond. So anyway, stuff you can learn in organic chemistry. Um, but so when we have uh, something with bute or pent or hex or oct, it just kind of is giving it, it gives us a little bit of a hint as to what this compound is. Um, there's more to it and it becomes a whole thing, but yeah, organic chemistry. It's one of the first things you learn is all of this um, nomenclature. I always found it pretty, pretty cool. Okay, I think we are good with this one, this N-butyl, so let's stop that. And, ooh, it does not smell great. I'm not in love with it. I actually have this waste, um, this little waste beaker that I'm gonna put in the, the fume hood to sort of vent off some of the smell. All right, ooh, God, that's, that is nasty. I'm gonna have to do some cleanup here. Uh, next, we're gonna do the isopentyl. So we're working on isopentyl now. Um, here it is. It's kind of gross, as they all are. Do a quick dip. Start our engines. Oh, you guys can't really read that, can you? It was 24.8. Okay, I'm gonna do some cleanup real quick while that's running. I really hate that we use the word organic for like food stuff. It drives me crazy um, because as a chemist, organic just means that it has carbon in it. So it's like all food is organic. So it's like, yeah, no, really? It's like, oh, that corn is organic. I'm like, yeah, it has carbon in it. Of course it is. I mean, I know it's not what they mean, but it's still like we've, we've chosen, chosen like a different name, a different way to talk about these things, but it's not up to me. I'm fond of these temperature probes. They're very useful. That's what we call them. It's not really a thermometer, I guess. I don't know. It's just, it just sounds fancier. Um, yeah, for AP chemistry, there's a lot of equipment that we don't use in general um, that, I, that you guys get to use. Um, partially because we just don't need it in regular, but also because there's fewer of you. Even when there's more than 10 students, it's still usually a lot less, and you all are generally a lot more trustworthy with more complicated stuff. Like this lab um, is one of the ones where safety is really, really important because there, it's like there are some legitimately nasty chemicals. Um, I don't give you anything that's super, super horrible um, to work with, but sometimes you have to use stuff that's just a little gross. Um, like this, uh, there's one of these compounds, I can't remember which one it is, that's actually a bit of a health hazard. Um, so that's why I have the fume hood running and we use it in very tiny amounts and I try to vent the room as much as possible. Uh, you know, a small amount of anything for the most part is, is not the end of the world, um, but obviously safety is of the utmost importance. Okay, I think we're done with that one. So let's get rid of that. Let's do the hexane next. Um, hexane. Let's reset. Um, I've got us all set and ready to go here. I might need to warm up a little bit more. Let's see if I can go. 
Okay, perfect. Hexane. You can see it in there. Some liquid on it. Oh, that is not a good smell. It's um, all these things. How would they? How do I describe what they smell? Um, it's sort of similar. It's like when you smell gasoline. It's kind of similar to that. Um, it's probably more like if you've ever smelled any other, like other um, industrial or mechanical, like oils or lubricants. They all sort of have a very similar smell. Um, and it smells bad to us because those things are generally not good for humans. So, oh man. That one's dropping pretty rapidly. I actually really love this lab. Oh, yeah, that one's got a stink to it. Um, I was watching this video online. I'll have to see if I can find it. It was like the 10, excuse me, like most deadly chemicals or something like that. And they talked about one, and I don't know what it was called, but it was something, I think they were synthesizing it in a lab somewhere. And it's like the smelliest thing on the planet. Like it smells incredibly awful uh, to human beings. We, we have receptors for it. And they said they made some in a lab in some town um, and or maybe they had a small a tiny amount of it and they 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 dropped the vial something like that and it broke we're talking like maybe a milliliter like a tiny little amount and they had to evacuate the whole town because the whole town smelled um as it's like i guess it's where human noses are like super sensitive to this particular compound to the point where it's like a molecule like we can detect it like when there's just like a couple of molecules of it which is pretty uh pretty insane but i don't doubt it there's some weird some weird stuff out there okay well, this one's getting kind of cold i don't think it's going to get down to negative i don't think it's going to beat out acetone it's getting pretty cold evaporative cooling man it's real. We might need to talk about heating curves. Yeah, we should probably do that. Okay, well, I'll stop there. Um, good, we actually need to get, I need to get a move on because my next class is about to start. But let's do um, octal alcohol next. This is the one, if I remember correctly, that smells really bad. Go on, start, okay. Excuse me. I'm gonna take uh, these back to my fume hood. Get them out of my face. Oh, good. For one, a second there, I was worried the temperature probe was broken, but okay. Oh, I'm sorry. This is um, this is not hexane. This is octal alcohol. Okay. 
So the uh, YL in octal alcohol is also referring to something about its nomenclature. I don't actually remember what it is off the top of my head. Uh, it's been a while. <laughs> it's been a while since I took um, organic chemistry. <laughs> specifically organic chemistry one, first semester of organic chemistry. Organic chemistry two, you do more like uh, reactions and synthesis. It's pretty cool. My, uh, the first lab we did in organic chemistry was, or one of the first ones was we extracted um, caffeine from tea leaves. It was a really, it was a pretty fun lab. It involved, um, we had to use like essentially gasoline um, and a couple of things because because caffeine is actually uh, a it's a non-polar molecule, so you can't use water. Oh no, it is a polar molecule, because you can use water to extract a lot of it, but to like get rid of everything else and just have the caffeine from the tea leaves. Um, decaffeination actually is pretty easy. If you just, uh, if you wanted like a non-caffeinated, -caf you know, reduce the caffeine of your tea, you just kind of rinse it in hot water, let it steep for just a minute, pour all that off, and then go again. Most of the caffeine ends up um, uh, removed from that first initial um, uh, steep in hot water. Um, but to get all of it, we had to go through all these processes, and it's kind of interesting because that's the same processes that they use um, to extract cocaine from coca leaves. So we would all joke about how we, we were now ready to move to South America and uh, start, start, start uh, working, extracting cocaine from coca leaves. Obviously, we're not going to do that, but it was a fun joke. Okay, I think we're done. That's great. Um, so that should be all of the data that you need and enjoy the rest of your lab.